let's go over exterior color palettes and color schemes and how to go about putting them together. Some exterior design, if you will. When you're picking colors for the outside of your house, you don't have to worry about the carpet, your couch color, you just gotta worry about the house itself. There are definitely some parallels when you're picking colors inside and outside of your home. There's also some key differences that you're going to wanna to stick around for so you don't make a frustrating and costly mistake. These are five considerations to make with exterior color palettes. The weather is starting to get warmer, it's getting really nice outside, which means now is the time to start figuring out what you wanna do with the outside of your home. I also wanna quickly thank Mighty Boards for helping us out with this video today, so more on them later on. This is mainly a paint channel after all, so let's start by talking about the first thing you need to think of when changing up your exterior color palette, and that's assessing what needs to be painted. Every house is going to have a slightly different layout, and some are easier to assess than others. If you have a home mainly consisting of painted siding and wooden trim, then you have quite a bit of surface area to deal with. But then on the other hand, if you have mainly brick, stone, or unpainted wood, then maybe not so much. Exterior color palettes are formatted in a similar way to interior ones. If you remember the 60-30-10 rule I was talking about before in another video, you tend to have one primary or main color that takes up a majority of the visual space. You then have a secondary color. And then of course, there's the accent color for that tiny touch of intrigue. Traditionally, your main exterior color is going to be the body of the house. The secondary color is likely going to be the trim or the railing color, and then your accent is mostly front doors and shutters. While you can technically paint nearly any surface of your house, I tend to mainly paint siding, some stucco, and occasionally brick. But what if you're working with surfaces you don't want to paint? The second thing to consider when changing any of your exterior colors is to identify what you're not changing. Just like you want to incorporate the flooring and maybe the ceiling when you're painting inside, when you're picking your exterior color, you gotta look at the brick, the stone, the stucco, or the siding that you're not touching. These are all going to be more permanent features, and they're less likely to change unless you're doing a pretty serious reno. But for everyone else that's just looking to refresh some of the paintable surfaces, you wanna make sure that whatever colors you end up going with are going to work with these more permanent components. Sometimes you'll have a bright red brick that is pretty obvious in its coloration, but other times you may be working with more neutral brick or stone. So it's really important to analyze what sort of undertones are present within all those components. Is it truly grayscale? Or maybe you have some sandy beige warmth or pinky peachiness present. It's also a good idea to take the mortar color into consideration. If it tones in with the brick that's already there, then that would be a more subtle look. But if your mortar is more contrasty, then it'll create a more dynamic look, which could be too aggressive if you also pick really bright and saturated colors. Also, if your exterior uses a lot of wood, even if you don't plan on changing it out, the wood itself is likely to change as it gets weathered. Golden cedar can gray in time, which can drastically change the look of your home. So unless you're planning to refinish it every single year, it's important to remind yourself that the look will change in time. Comment below if you would like to hear more about exterior wood staining and painting in a future video. Another important consideration is to go outside. I know it sounds super obvious, but I know a lot of people that will choose their exterior color palette indoors in a paint store under fluorescent lighting, only to find out that their beautiful warm beige color that they picked out looks like a bright pink on their house. Although we know the sun to be a wonderful, big, warm, fiery ball of energy, the light that it produces is actually quite cool and can therefore really change any color's perceived undertones. The way you address this is by making sure to view the color outside. And there's really no better way than to paint a Mighty Board, which is a flexible painting board that you can use to properly see the color on a large surface before you go ahead and paint the house itself. Mighty Boards are fantastic for the fact that you can move this large sample around and view the color under different lighting conditions. Oftentimes, one side of your house will be more shaded than the other, and this can dramatically impact the look of the color. So it's just a whole lot easier to bring a Mighty Board around than to paint three or four different parts of your house during the color testing process. I'll leave a link to our video down below if you want more information. The fourth exterior color palette tip is go deep. 
I always tend to recommend picking colors that are a bit deeper and richer. And that's largely because of the amount of sunlight that is going to be hitting it. The more direct light color is getting, the more washed out it tends to look. This is why you don't necessarily want to pick the brightest white outside because it'll end up looking that much brighter. You're going to want to test your colors regardless, but just keep in mind when you're selecting your color palette, try and overcompensate for not only the sun's cooler color temperature, but also its light intensity. Long story short, you're likely going to need to pick a color that's darker than you think. So that soft white look you're looking for may actually be this color instead of this one. The fifth tip I can give you is to go for a walk. Before you commit to painting anything, take a look at your neighborhood as a whole and start to assess any common themes or see if you can figure out the character of the neighborhood you're in. This could relate to the architectural similarities or even the era upon which all of those neighboring houses were made. Even if you're an incredibly creative person and you could care less what other houses are doing design-wise, I urge you to at least consider fitting into the surrounding houses in one way or another. If you're living in the east coast of Canada, then one common theme could be bright, beautiful, saturated colors. On the other hand, if you're living in a condominium townhouse that has very restrictive conditions that don't allow you to deviate at all, then you gotta think about that too. Or you could be in a much older or historic neighborhood where there's some regulations that require you to use specific materials or even color schemes that are in line with that historic era. These are all considerations that are pretty important when you're thinking about your exterior color palette in general. Before you decide what's going on the body of the house or the trim or the doors, just grasp these concepts and you'll be in a much better position overall. If you happen to have red brick on your house, here's a video all about color palettes just for that. So hopefully you'll find the winning color combination for your home.